What if the last photograph of an alien world has already been taken and no one's ever going back? Pluto and a strange frozen object no one even knew existed when the spacecraft launched. These may be the final images we'll ever see of them. Hello and welcome. I'm Orion, coming to you from Infinite Universe NTH. In 2015, after a nine-year journey through deep space, a small spacecraft called New Horizons flew past Pluto and changed everything we thought we knew. Then it went even farther to a place no one had ever seen before. It sent back images of Pluto and later of Arakoth, a fossil of the early solar system suspended in time. Now the spacecraft drifts ever outward. No more close-ups, no second chances just what it captured in that fleeting moment. These final images are more than just pictures. They are memory, frozen in light. Proof that even the loneliest places in the cosmos still matter. When New Horizons began approaching Pluto in 2015, even NASA scientists admitted, we didn't know what we were going to see. All we had were blurry dots from Hubble, faint colors, vague shapes, no texture. But in the final weeks before closest approach, something started to happen. Each day Pluto grew clearer, and then something unexpected appeared. A heart, a vast pale basin stretching across Pluto's surface, shaped unmistakably like a heart. It wasn't just poetic. It was geological, and it had a name, Sputnik Planitia. Notice how smooth this region looks compared to the rest of Pluto? That's not a coincidence. It's a sign of geological youth. Few craters mean it's either new or constantly renewed. Let's pause for scale. Pluto is tiny, only about 2,377 kilometers across. That's less than one-fifth the diameter of Earth. Even our moon is bigger. And yet, this miniature world holds mountain ranges, glaciers, nitrogen ice plains, and possibly an ocean beneath. Think about that. Europa and Enceladus, moons famous for their oceans beneath icy crusts, are warmed by tidal forces from giant planets. Pluto? It's all the way out here, alone. And yet, it might have a sea too. As New Horizons swept closer, just 12,500 kilometers from the surface, it captured what no eye had ever seen. Jagged peaks of water ice, soaring four kilometers high. Flowing glaciers made of nitrogen. A thin, ghostly atmosphere casting blue haze across the horizon. Each frame wasn't just a picture, it was a revelation. And just beyond Pluto, its dark companion awaited. But before we leave this distant world, there's something even more curious. Something that doesn't quite move the way we'd expect. Pluto is not alone. Floating beside it is Charon, a dark, massive moon locked in eternal orbit. But this is no ordinary relationship. Charon is nearly half the size of Pluto, so massive, in fact, that their center of gravity lies outside of Pluto itself. They don't orbit like a planet and a moon. They orbit each other, around a point in space between them. This is almost unheard of. In our entire solar system, only Pluto and Charon behave this way. It's more like a binary planet system than a planet and moon. And there's more. They are tidally locked to each other, forever showing the same face, never turning away. Stand on Pluto, and Charon never moves. Stand on Charon, and Pluto stares right back, motionless, a synchronized waltz in the dark. But what makes this dance even more curious? Pluto hides its heart, literally. The glacier of Sputnik Planitia, that beautiful pale heart, always faces away from Quran. 
It's as if Pluto is showing its brightest side to the cosmos, but keeping it hidden from the one object closest to it. Is it coincidence? Or does gravity have a sense of poetry? There's actually a deeper reason. Sputnik Planitia is massive. The dense nitrogen ice creates a gravitational anomaly. Over time, Pluto reoriented itself, rotating, so that this heavy heart faced directly opposite Charon. It stabilized the tidal axis. The result? A perfectly balanced pair. One facing the stars, the other forever watching its companion. But Karen isn't just a sidekick. New Horizons revealed its own mysteries. A surface of water ice, deep scars, and a polar cap tinted red. And some of that red came from Pluto itself. From the surface, Pluto looks cold, silent, still. But above it, it breathes, thin, ghostly, almost unreal and yet unmistakable. New Horizons revealed that Pluto has an atmosphere, faint, delicate, but dynamic, made mostly of nitrogen, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. And then the images came in and we saw something no one expected. Haze, layer upon layer of it, not one or two, up to 20, backlit by the sun, glowing faint blue, rising high into the sky. Some layers stretch kilometers above the ground, others brush the surface, like a ripple of light bending across the curvature of the world. No other planet has haze quite like this, not even Titan. We used to think Pluto's atmosphere was too thin to matter, but here we see it move. We see it refract sunlight. We see it glow. At its peak, atmospheric pressure on Pluto might rise to 280 microbars, about one fourth that of Mars. But even at its thinnest, it's enough to shape the world. And it doesn't just stay on Pluto because sometimes Pluto shares its breath. When cryovolcanoes erupt, they release dark slurries of tholins and gases. Some of that material escapes Pluto's gravity and travels over 19,000 kilometers through space to Charon. Charon's North Pole has a reddish cap and we believe it comes directly from Pluto. This is the first known case of one world painting another with its atmosphere. Because Karen and Pluto always show the same face to each other, any eruption on Pluto targets the same spot. Over millions of years, red particles settle on Karen's pole and freeze, a fingerprint of one world left on another. Pluto has a heart, it has breath, it leaves fingerprints on its companion. But now, it may have something even more unexpected. A sea beneath the ice. For decades, scientists believed Pluto was too small, too cold, too dead to harbor any activity inside. But when New Horizons mapped its surface, something didn't quite fit. Around Sputnik Planitia, that vast frozen heart, they found no major craters. No deep cracks from contraction. Instead, signs of expansion. That changed everything. Because expansion means the crust is pushing outward. Something beneath is pressing up. And that something might be liquid, still moving, still there. But here's the twist. Pluto may not just have an ocean now. It may have had one since the very beginning. How? Most icy moons like Europa or Enceladus, are kept warm by tidal forces from giant planets. But Pluto? It's alone. So the theory is this. Pluto formed hot from violent impacts in the early solar system, enough to melt its interior and create a sea. And that sea? It may have survived, locked beneath a shell of nitrogen ice. Nitrogen at Pluto's temperatures flows like glaciers. It insulates, it protects. And under Sputnik Planitia, the planet's deepest basin, 
that ocean might still be liquid. Some scientists believe it even erupts. Cryovolcanoes like Wright Monsbe could be Pluto's ocean breaking through. If this is true, Pluto joins a rare list, a place in the solar system where liquid water may still exist today. And with water comes possibility, not certainty, but the possibility of life. After Pluto, most missions would have ended, but New Horizons kept going deeper into the Kuiper Belt. Then, something remarkable happened. In 2014, with help from the Hubble Space Telescope, NASA spotted a tiny dim object just 35 kilometers across. It had no name, no known features, just a faint speck in the darkness. They called it Arakoth. This would become the most distant object ever visited by a spacecraft, a time capsule six and a half billion kilometers away. As New Horizons approached, we saw something no one expected. Two lobes joined together, a shape like a snowman, but flattened, primitive, dark, not a planet, not a moon, something else entirely. Arakoth is a contact binary, two ancient bodies that drifted toward each other and gently became one. Its surface is red, colored by tholins, organic compounds formed when ultraviolet light breaks apart simple molecules like methane. They don't mean life, but they mean chemistry, ancient, complex, and essential. There are almost no impact craters. Its surface is smooth, unbroken. Some of its pits may not be craters at all, but sinkholes. As volatile ice escapes slowly from the inside, the surface caves in. This is a world where time moved gently, a fossil of the early solar system, preserved, untouched, complete. This gentle fusion may mirror how planets began, not in fire, in chaos, but in drift, in dust, in silence. And Arakoth, in its stillness, may be the closest we've ever come to hearing the first whisper of the solar system. New Horizons gave us its face, a relic floating in the cold, and it spoke without sound. At first glance, Arakoth looks like a lumpy snowman, two lobes, uneven, connected by a narrow neck. But when scientists analyzed its rotation, they saw something strange. It never showed much depth. And when they built a 3D model from hundreds of images, the truth became clear. Arakoth is flat, not spherical, not oval, flattened like a disk in deep space where collisions are rare and gravity is weak. This was unexpected. Why would a body formed in zero pressure collapse into a flat shape? We still don't fully know, but there are theories. One idea, gentle rotation. As the two lobes orbited each other, they slowly spun and centrifugal force may have compressed them over time. Another idea, seasonal heating. Because Arakoth rotates so slowly, one side can face the sun for decades. That long exposure may cause ices to slowly sublimate, changing shape, changing balance. But the most poetic idea, Arakoth never changed at all. It formed this way, gently, silently, in the earliest cloud of dust, long before planets, and then it just stayed, a perfect fossil frozen in its first moment. Sometimes silence has a shape and Arakoth in its symmetry and stillness may be the quietest world we've ever seen, not by accident, but by origin. New Horizons has taken its photographs. Pluto in 2015, Arakoth 
in 2019. And now, it moves forward, alone, deeper than any active mission in human history. It's over 8 billion kilometers from Earth, still functioning, still listening, but the cameras, they're off. The pictures are done. These are the final images we may ever see of Pluto and Arakoth. No other mission is planned. No other spacecraft is close. In our lifetime, this may be all we get. But New Horizons isn't finished. Now it becomes something else. A deep space observatory. An explorer of the unknown. Its new mission? To study the heliosphere the invisible bubble that surrounds our solar system and what lies beyond it. Cosmic radiation, interstellar dust, maybe even rogue black holes. New Horizons now sees the sun as no other probe does. Diamond soins distant, quiet. It may one day go silent, no more signals, no more telemetry, but it will still drift outward past the edge of the sun's reach into true interstellar space, carrying with it a heart-shaped world and a fossil of the solar system's first whisper. These images aren't just data, they're memory, a reminder that even the smallest, coldest, farthest places can matter. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm Orion, and this is Infinite Universe NTH. Stay curious, stay inspired. And I'll see you in the next cosmic story.